Why do you do that? That's what it says in the book. Ugh. Brainwashed as a little kid from when you were two years old to do it every morning. I mean, of course you feel clean after that. It's in your, it's in your mind. It's like it's, it's, it's above the understanding place where it is in there. I don't know where it is. It's like inside, deep, deep inside. You know that you're clean. You don't think. You know. How was the wedding for you? How did it, how did it make you feel? Because it was lively, right? It was, it was very lively. Yeah. Quite a lot of people in the town knows me. And come to make my son happy. My son is working in the shop, so they came to to make him happy. He's got many customers who come in. And everybody just came to wish him congratulations. They were, were all helping in the dancing and stuff. And <laughs> Avi is a father of five. His second son, Tuli, has just returned from five years of religious studies in Israel. He's come back to work in his dad's property business. Tuli, how old are you? I'm 19. You're 19? Yeah, I am. So you're Avi's second oldest? Second oldest, that's right. Unless there's some more that I don't know about. <laughs> I'm joking. Is he a good dad? Yeah, he's my, he's the, I think he's the best dad, seriously. Is he like a friend as well? Yeah, he is. It's not he's like a friend, he is a friend. At 19, and with his older brother married off, Avi has decided it's time to find a match for Tuli. Hello, yes. Hello. Yes, I am the owner. I've just met your son. Oh, what do you think of him? He's a good lad. Good lad, he's a good lad. When, he's he, feet, when he sleeps, he's very good. <laughs> hello, understand. And where's the water going? And where's the water leading to? Hello, hello. We need to talk to a few matchmakers to get him, get him out of the way. <laughs> what sort of woman would suit him, do you think? Uh, I hope we'll get a good wife, I don't know. Okay. Good young girl. Yes. Uh, good behaviour. Girl who's got a bit of brain. Hello, yes, I'm with you. You know what? I'll I'll I'll, come, I'll be there, I'll be there in like for five ten minutes. All right? No problem. See you later. Julie works for you, right? Yeah, I'm trying to get him into the business. Into the property business. Mm. So how's he doing? How is he doing? <laughs> At the moment, everything he's touching is wrong. I'm just joking. Let me show. I can show the box. See you later. See you. Take care. Do you really think he's ready to get married? Yeah. Mm -hmm. At 18, uh, 19, it's the time to start looking for a match. Okay, so um, what else do I need to know about your son? So what's he doing? You said he's working. Uh, he's working for me now in property management. Okay, so what does that mean? What's he doing? Uh, it could be anything. He's managing my properties, uh, right. uh, collecting rent. Right, okay. What, what sort of personality? I mean, I would like to meet him at some mm, stage, sure. I think, or even to talk to him on the phone just to mm. find out what he's sure, like. Sure. What, what would you say his personality is like? He's is a he? very, very nice guy, very generous. I'm sure he's nice, he's no, your son. <laughs> no, no, what's, it, what's he like? Is he quiet? Is he, is he loud? Is he...? He's quiet, he's shy. He's, he's shy. How would you describe the level that he learns at? Does he is he a good learner? Or is uh, he average? He is. He is. He's clever. He's, a, he's very clever. Yeah. Right. Right. Very smart. Uh huh. So. Um, he's definitely built to work, but he's learning. He's, he's very interested to learn. Right. Okay. Fine. I've got a picture of this. Okay. If that will tell you anything. It's quite. You can't really tell. With my the my first son just got married a couple of months ago, so I got a picture from the from the wedding. Oh, uh, let's see. Engagement to the wedding, can't you? Very nice. Um, how can I put this? It shouldn't be a problem for him. The only thing is, most of the girls who come to me are um, university educated girls. It's not so much the, um, you know, the, I, don't, I don't get so much the type of girl that you'd be looking for. Mm. One very important factor for you to know, uh, I was convicted for money laundering a few years ago. And uh -huh. I spent four and a half years in jail. So some families maybe it will not be suitable. And listen, you need to know it in advance. Uh, there's no comebacks. Why didn't you tell me why? Right. <coughs> it's maybe a, 
what do you call it, Ketem, uh, like a bad mark, but it's a bad mark out of a lot of good stuff. Uh, it's not, uh, <laughs> the good side will cover for it. Mm. I was in prison for four and a half years. For money laundering? That's right. And what was the money used for? The dirty money? Uh, it was used to... The money came from class A drugs. And it was shipped to Colombia to buy probably some more cocaine or whatever. And how much money was, was laundered? Uh, according to the prosecution, six and a half million, just over six and a half million pounds. Was that right? The right figure? I don't know. <laughs> How did you manage to find a wife for your oldest son? Where, where did she come from? Uh, my, my first son is working for me. And I've got uh, three grocery shops in Stamford Hill. I'm a partner in them. And he's working there. And he met a girl by serving on the team. I see. <laughs> that might be how you're going to find someone for this son, because I think it's going to be very difficult for me to phone up someone and say, right, would you like you know, to explain all the facts? Because um, I don't know you at all. Mm. I mean, Stanford Hill, everybody knows me. Sure, no, I'm sure they do. It's just I'm yeah. not from Stanford Hill, yeah. so you're out of my uh, area. Avishnek, he lives uh, when you take the first left here, in the second corner on the right, corner house. Uh, no, I don't know. No, I don't, yeah. Amazingly, yeah. I don't know okay. everyone in the street. Do you know Dunker? No. You, no. Yeah, just no. around the corner here. No. Yeah. no. Your son sure. is a bit out of the box. Mm. So I think it's not going to be an easy one to, mm. to find I mean, I'll be honest with you, I'm prepared to compensate in that way. For example, with the previous uh, two, three months I've taken. Mm. Uh, I've paid all the expenses from the Hassan wedding, uh, the lot, dressing guy. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, there's a lead for every bottle, they say. Oh, sure, sure. And, uh, no, that's right. I want, to feel I, that I'm, I, I want to feel that I've done my best, that I tried, I went to the sure. him and I spoke sure. to him. Sure, sure. Oh, he's a very special boy. If you, if you see him, if you get to know him. I would very much like to I'm not saying it because him. I'm his father. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Well, I appreciate it. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. I had a bit of a shock when he announced that he'd been in prison. It threw me completely. I really did have a shock. Did you launder the money? No, it was a conspiracy. I had a part in a conspiracy which I allowed to use my office to receive and collect money. I hope it was all right with him. I hope it didn't offend him in any way. Um, I don't, I've never come across this before at all. Um, so it, it was very difficult for me. So you just housed it? That's right, yeah. And did you know a lot about what the money was being used for? Not really, but uh, the money had some dirty smell. <laughs> I suppose, on reflection, you know, it's not, it shouldn't be something that will be held against his son. But unfortunately, in the Jewish community, it's a very small community, people will know about this and people will judge accordingly. The whole package disturbs a bit, there's no question about it. But there's, some good, there's a lot of good sides to us. People know Ari Bresler is, people love Ari Bresler, Ari Bresler's got no enemies. People respect him for what he is. And I think that covers a lot. Ari's never had a hard bringing up. His father died when he was only seven. Avi didn't have the fatherly background and drifted into bad company and bad behavior. And really, you sometimes get people of a man's daughter don't get a nine-year sentence. And it caused him to drift away from the original marriage. Mm. And uh, his wife wants to stay to him, but he sort of learned different ways of enjoyments in life, which are very sad. And uh, he likes, loves his children, but he wants to stick to the old, the new rules he's learned. And something, once you learn a new rule, you get used to it. It's very hard, and I don't want to go into details, but anybody who understands, understands what I mean. And this has caused the marriage to, to drift apart. Not the Hasidic way. Not the religious way. Not, not the Hasidic way, not the religious way. In any way it is, but you can't expect what you expect. Our prisons are full of these kind of people. They're loaded with these kind of people who come from the, all these kind of backgrounds. So, of course, you learn bad way. The, the government alone admits that in prison is the best school, the best college for educating thieves and everything else, and it's for all kind of behavior. A week 
later, I was off with Avi and some of his friends to the Ukraine for one of the biggest dates in the Jewish calendar, Rosh Hashanah, New Year. alcohol. Can you have a drink here? Yes. What vodka. I can drink vodka, whiskey. Don't don't need to be kosher. Beer. beer, yes. You okay? Yeah. Hold on, something for charity, a donation for charity. Oh, I've got to go this way for now. I'll try and catch you later. For one week of every year, the town of Uman is taken over by tens of thousands of Hasidim. It's one of the biggest festivals of its kind anywhere in the world. The Stanford Hill Posse. That's right, we're Stanford Hill boys. And we're the in Stanford Hill boys are here. How oh, amazing. I'm so excited. As you can see, we've got some bunk beds. It's probably going to be... It's the second time in my life I'm sitting asleep on a bunk bed. Previous time I was in prison. <laughs> As you see, everyone's, you see, everyone's wearing white down there. Why are they wearing that? Um, white is a colour for clean of sins. God forgives us. Once Rosh Hashanah begins, there are very strict rules about what festival goers can and cannot do. It says the festival started, do not put off cigarettes. You're not allowed to put off. You can just leave it on the side, do not put off. Not light, not put off. So they have to keep smoking? No, no, you can just leave it on the side. Put it in an ashtray, do not put it off. Like you cannot light also. You can light from one to another, you can light from a candle, but you cannot light the fire. Uh, I want to count the money next to you. Uh, I mean, I'll count yeah. it, you count it, and then you keep it. Uh, Are you not allowed to keep money? That's right. No. Why not? Because it's against the law to hold the money. Okay, that's one. How much is here? Uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 2,000. 2,200 pounds, uh, 500 dollars, and 1,080 grivens. <laughs> I want to give you my passport. Oh my god. Patrick, if you want, we've got tons of nuts, sour sticks, Harry Bowls, chocolates, and peanut juice, and crackers, a suitcase, a suitcase here which Avi brought full of nuts from his shop. We've got the ready made meals, you just have to put hot water. So I can have any of that. You can have whatever you want. You're part of the member now. They cannot like by themselves, they think like for me. The Hasidim make the yearly pilgrimage to visit the grave of Rabbi Nachman, a key figure of the Hasidic branch of Orthodox Judaism, who died a little over 200 years ago. Nachman promised he would save those followers from hell who came to his grave at New Year. Thank you.